What's up, everybody? It's me, the SKI to the double T-L-E-F, Skittles in the hizzy, and I'm ready to tell you what's up. Today, we are talking about Easter. So every time somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. Jesus paid the price so I could be forgiven. You know, the world is full of people who will tell you that you ain't worth much. Let's see, uh, you are worth $10. Uh, you are worth $100, and you, I think I'm just going to return you to the store. No way, baby. God decided what you was worth a long time ago when he sent his son Jesus to die on a cross for you. God proved through all of that what you were worth, baby. So anytime, I mean anytime somebody asks you what's up, you tell them. Jesus paid the price so I could be forgiven. And that right there is what's up. I got a rainbow of flavor and I'm living for my savior, Skittles out, baby. Oh yeah, what's up? Jesus paid the price so I could be forgiven. Hi kids, it's Kelsey and I'm bringing you today's Bible story. Today's Bible story will be found in Luke 22 and 23. Several times in the last hours of Jesus' life, he revealed that times were going to get very hard for the disciples, but that he would give them peace throughout these tough times. The disciples didn't understand what Jesus was talking about. They wondered what could be about to happen. After the Last Supper, Jesus took the disciples to the garden to pray. After he had prayed for quite a while, suddenly the disciples heard a sound of marching boots. It was a group of Roman soldiers. With them was Judas, one of the disciples. Judas had taken a payment of 30 pieces of silver in order to betray Jesus and turn him over to the Romans. The Roman soldiers arrested Jesus and took him to face the religious leaders. The religious leaders were jealous of Jesus. They thought that Jesus was becoming too popular among the people. So they made things up about him and claimed he had broken laws that he actually hadn't. But Jesus didn't defend himself. He kept silent and let them accuse him of these terrible things. What happened next was horrible. The soldiers beat Jesus with a whip. They punched him and kicked him. Then they created a crown made out of thorns and jammed it into his head. He began to bleed terribly. The whole time Jesus just kept silent and didn't fight against them. Jesus was brought before Pilate, a judge at that time. Pilate couldn't find that Jesus had done anything wrong but the religious leaders insisted that Jesus was guilty. So Pilate let the crowd decide. Pilate asked the crowd, what do you want to do with Jesus? Sadly, the crowd yelled, crucify him. To crucify someone meant to nail them to a wooden cross. And that is what happened to Jesus. Jesus was led to the top of the hill outside the city. It is there that the soldiers nailed his hands and feet to the cross. The soldiers laughed at him and made fun of him. Instead of getting angry, Jesus actually prayed, Father, forgive them. They don't realize what they're doing. Jesus died on the cross that day and he was laid in the tomb. But Jesus' death is not the end of the story because three days later, Jesus rose from the dead. The tomb that they laid him in was empty and Jesus is alive. And you're going to learn all about it in your lesson today. Hey guys, Pastor Steve here, and I'm here with today's lesson. Today is Easter Sunday, and we are celebrating the fact that Jesus has risen from the dead. He's no longer dead, he is alive, and that is awesome news. Because of his resurrection from the dead, because he defeated death, hell, and the grave, we can have everlasting life. We can have eternal life through Jesus. Isn't that awesome, kids? Well, today our lesson is called Tough Choices. And you know what, kids? Life is a series of tough choices. Well, it's a series of choices anyway. Some are tough and some are pretty easy. Every day you wake up in the morning and you have to decide. You have to choose what you're going to have for breakfast. Are you going to have cereal or are you going to have something else? And if you choose cereal, what kind of cereal are you going to choose? Are you going to choose Frosted Flakes or Cocoa Pebbles? Or maybe you feel like Honey Nut Cheerios. Ah, there's so many choices. You also have to choose what video game console do you think is better? Do you think Nintendo Switch is better? Do you think 
Xbox is better, maybe it's a PlayStation. Whatever it is, you make a decision on what is better and what is not. You know, and then there's tougher decisions as you get older. Maybe what college you're gonna go to, or maybe what you're gonna pursue as a career. Sometimes those are really difficult decisions to make. But regardless, life is a series of choices. And we need to make sure that we're making the right choices, that we're making the right decisions, decisions that are going to please God and that match up to what his word says and that we're in line with his will for our lives. Do you know, guys, that Jesus, he had to choose too. Even God himself, God the Father, had to choose. He had to make decisions too. In fact, that's our first point today. Our first point today is that God chose to send Jesus. God chose to send Jesus. Sometimes we forget that. But what does John 3.16 say? For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. See, God sent him. He made a decision to send him. God is the creator of the entire universe. He is the ruler of everything, of all things. He is the greatest power that ever was or will ever be. He does not have to do anything, does he? Nobody can make God do anything. No one can say, hey, God, you need to do this. God does as he pleases. And that's awesome to think about because God sent his son. So it pleased him to send Jesus to earth. And he, it pleased him even though he knew that the reason Jesus was coming to earth was ultimately to die for you and for me because we're all sinners. God is our heavenly father. He created us to be in relationship with him. And because of sin, the first sin that Adam and Eve committed back in the garden a long, long time ago, when they chose to take a bite of that fruit, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And when God said, don't eat of this tree, you can have all the other fruit of all the other trees in the garden, but not this one. And they chose to take of that fruit. Sin entered the world at that moment. And because sin entered the world, it separated our relationship with God. God's intent was for us to be close, to have a relationship with him. However, when Adam and Eve made that decision, they separated us from God. Sin is really anything that's, that goes against God's commands that we find in the Bible. Romans 6.23 says, The payment for sin is death. Death is separation from God. It's separation from the life that God had planned for us. So because of that sin, God made one of the toughest decisions, toughest choices that will, anyone will ever have to make. Our power verse teaches us, about this tough choice. It says, for this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only son so that anyone or everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. God chose to send his one and only son, Jesus, to come to earth and to die in our place. Man, that's a tough choice. Can you imagine being a parent and choosing to let your child die to save someone else? Or allow your child to go in the place of someone who was guilty? That's what God did. God the Father chose to send Jesus, His Son, God the Son, to earth to die in our place. Because God loved us. God loves you and He loves me. And He chose to send Jesus to earth. But not only that, our second point is this. Jesus chose to leave heaven. See, Jesus had a will too. He could make a decision on his own. He could say, no, I'm not going to go. I'm going to stay right here. But the Father and Jesus, the Son, are one. They have the same mind. And Jesus decided he chose to come to earth. Jesus lived in heaven, the most perfect place in the universe. He had the perfect life as the son of the creator of all things. However, Jesus chose to leave all of that and come to earth to be born as a baby. If you remember, Jesus was born in a stable surrounded by animals. And he was laid in a manger, which is a feeding trough for animals. So he was laid in a manger 
with a bunch of hay around it. That's how he chose to enter this world. That's not exactly the birth of a king. And yet, that's what Jesus chose to do. That's why Jesus' choice to leave heaven is so amazing. He left a perfect home to come to be a human being just like us. But the toughest choice of all was our third point. And our third point is that Jesus chose to die on the cross. Jesus let men arrest him. Jesus allowed them to give false testimony against him. He didn't even speak up and try to defend himself. He didn't say a word. Jesus let the religious leaders accuse him even though he was totally innocent. Jesus let the soldiers beat him and nail him on a cross and he didn't fight them. As the son of God, Jesus could have called 10,000 angels to come and save him and destroy all the Romans and all the religious leaders that had put him on that cross. He could have called 10,000 angels in a moment and that would have happened, but he didn't. He did not do that. He chose to go to the cross. He chose to allow himself to be arrested, falsely accused, beaten, and ultimately hung on a cross to die for your sins and mine. He chose to do that. Even the night before he was arrested, Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he was saying, Father, if there be any other way, let that way happen. Because Jesus knew what was going to happen. He knew he was going to be arrested and falsely accused and beaten and hung on a cross. He knew that was coming. And he said, Father God, if there's any other way to save the world, to save you and to save me, let that happen. But then he said, but not my will, but your will be done. Jesus knew that him going to the cross was the only way that we could be saved. And so he chose to die on the cross. And that's what we, we remember about Easter. Good Friday is the day that Jesus died. And we think that's not very good. It's good because his death and his blood that was shed for us to wash away our sins gave us new life. And when he rose from the dead on Easter Sunday, it solidified it. He had conquered death. And because he has conquered death, we can conquer death. We know that we have eternal life through Jesus. And that when we say yes to Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for washing all my sins away. I accept you as my savior. Guess what happened, kids? You're made brand new and all your sins are washed completely away. And you are given new life. And not only new life here on earth, but new life, eternal life. Where you're going to live with Jesus for all eternity in heaven one day. That's what Jesus gives us when he, because he rose from the dead. And that is what we celebrate on this Easter Sunday, is that Jesus was victorious. Jesus rose from the dead. And because of that, we have life, and not only here on earth, but eternal life too. Isn't that awesome, kids? I want to pray with you guys right now. And maybe you're sitting there watching this video right now um, at home, and you're saying, you know what? I want that new life that Jesus gives us. I want to spend eternity with him in heaven. You know, the Bible says that all we have to do is call on the name of the Lord and we will be saved. And so let's do that right now. If you want to ask Jesus into your heart, you want to ask Jesus to be your savior, accept his sacrifice and his resurrection from the dead. I want you to repeat after me. Say, dear Jesus, I love you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me so much that you chose to go to the cross for me. Thank you, Jesus. I accept you. I accept your sacrifice. I acknowledge that you are have been raised from the dead and that you are alive. And I ask you to make me new, make me clean, and forgive me of all my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. That is so awesome, kids. That is the most important decision that you will ever make in your entire life is to say yes to Jesus and to thank him for what he did for you on that cross over 2,000 years ago. Jesus died for you, but he also rose from the dead for you too. And because of that, we have life 
and life everlasting. That is so awesome. Thanks, kids, for joining us this Easter Sunday morning. We pray that you guys have an awesome time with your family and your friends on this Easter, celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Until next time, I'll see you later.